Welcome to our deep dive into one of the most anticipated additions to the U.S. Air Force's helicopter fleet, the MH-139A Gray Wolf, entering service in 2025. At first glance, the Gray Wolf looks like a sleek, modern helicopter, and it is, but beneath that streamlined exterior lies a powerhouse of engineering, purpose-built for a critical role in national defense. Designed to replace the aging UH-1N Huey, the MH-139A is more than just a modern update, it's a leap forward in performance, survivability, and mission flexibility. Let's start with what this helicopter is all about. The MH-139A Grey Wolf is a militarized version of the Leonardo A-139, produced in partnership with Boeing. This is an important point because the A-139 is already a proven platform, widely used in civilian, parapublic, and military roles across the globe. By building on an existing design, Boeing and Leonardo were able to deliver a capable aircraft faster and more cost-effectively than designing one from scratch. The Grey Wolf takes that solid foundation and layers on military-grade upgrades tailored specifically for the U.S. Air Force's unique operational demands. Now, on to performance. The MH-139A is powered by two Pratt & Whitney Canada PT-6C-67C turboshaft engines, each capable of producing around 1,679 shaft horsepower. That gives the Grey Wolf impressive speed, topping out at 167 knots, about 192 miles per hour, which is about 50% faster than the UH-1N it's replacing. In terms of range, you're looking at roughly 750 nautical miles with auxiliary fuel tanks, offering more than enough reach to cover vast patrol zones or escort convoys across difficult terrain. But speed and range are only half the story. The MH-139A is also designed with payload and flexibility in mind. It can carry up to nine fully equipped troops, along with two pilots and a crew member, making it ideal for rapid response scenarios, tactical insertions, and personnel transport. Need to haul cargo instead? No problem. The aircraft has a maximum takeoff weight of about 15,000 pounds, and its spacious cabin can be quickly reconfigured to suit different mission profiles, from medevac operations with litters and medical staff, to carrying equipment or supplies to remote outposts. Of course, speed and payload don't mean much without survivability, and that's where the Grey Wolf really starts to earn its name. Unlike its civilian cousin, the MH-139A comes equipped with ballistic armor, self-sealing fuel tanks, and countermeasure systems designed to detect and evade incoming threats. It also includes secure communications, encrypted navigation systems, and advanced threat detection suites to handle modern electronic warfare environments. These features make it suitable for operations in contested or high-threat areas, something the old Huey was never designed for. One of the Grey Wolf's most high-profile missions is guarding America's Intercontinental Ballistic Missile ICBM, fields, a job that requires constant vigilance, harsh weather performance, and rapid reaction time. The U-1N struggled with range and speed, limiting their ability to quickly respond to potential intrusions or emergencies across the vast missile complexes of the Midwest. The MH-139A solves that problem with ease, slashing transit times and expanding coverage areas. That alone would justify the upgrade, but the Air Force isn't stopping there. Design-wise, the MH-139A is both modern and highly functional. Its streamlined fuselage reduces drag, contributing to higher speeds and better fuel efficiency. The five-blade main rotor and four-blade tail rotor are designed to reduce vibration and noise, increasing both crew comfort and stealth. The cockpit is fitted with state-of-the-art avionics, including a glass cockpit with multi-function displays, flight management systems, and night vision goggle NVG compatibility. Everything in the pilot's environment is geared toward reducing workload and increasing situational awareness, from automated flight control systems to terrain following radar and digital mapping. Inside the cabin, you'll find a mission-flexible layout with foldable seating, secure tie-downs, and ample room for specialized gear. The rear clamshell doors allow for rapid loading and unloading, especially useful in time-sensitive operations like casualty evacuation or security team deployments. Unlike many helicopters of its class, the Grey Wolf also features dual-hoist systems, offering redundancy and the ability to lift personnel or equipment even in complex environments like mountain rescue or shipboard operations. Another selling point, 
The MH139A is relatively cost-effective. Thanks to the pre-existing AW139 platform, Boeing was able to deliver the first units quickly and at a lower price point than some of the other options considered. The total program cost for 80 helicopters was estimated to be $2.4 billion, including development, procurement, and sustainment. That's a competitive price, especially considering the upgrades in performance and mission capability. It also helps that maintenance and training programs can draw from the commercial AW139 ecosystem, which is already supported worldwide. Now let's talk about the name, Grey Wolf. The U.S. Air Force chose this name to symbolize the aircraft's speed, lethality, and pack mentality. Grey Wolves hunt in coordinated groups, working together to overcome threats much larger than themselves. That's a fitting metaphor for the MH-139A's role within the Air Force's missile security and tactical support missions. It's not designed to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with frontline fighters or heavy-lift helicopters, but it doesn't need to. Instead, it fills a crucial niche, fast, flexible, secure air mobility in the homeland defense and support role. Despite its many strengths, the MH-139A is not without challenges. The program experienced some delays during testing and certification, largely due to the need to integrate military systems into a civilian airframe. Modifying avionics, survivability gear, and flight control systems took longer than expected, pushing full rate production into 2025. However, those issues now appear to be largely resolved, and the first units are already undergoing operational testing at Malmstrom Air Force Base in Montana, with additional aircraft slated for FE. Warren and Minot AFBs soon after. Beyond the military, it's not hard to imagine variants of the MH-139A being used for VIP transport, homeland security, or even disaster response. Its speed, range, and multi-mission flexibility make it an excellent candidate for roles that demand fast, safe personnel movement in uncertain environments. It also helps that the aircraft's relatively low noise profile and high reliability make it well-suited for both urban and rural operations. In a broader sense, the Grey Wolf is a reflection of how modern defense thinking is evolving. Gone are the days of one-size-fits-all aircraft, Today's armed forces need adaptable platforms that can perform multiple roles efficiently, without sacrificing performance or protection. The MH-139A exemplifies that approach. It isn't the biggest or most heavily armed helicopter in the U.S. arsenal, but it might be one of the smartest, built on a proven design, upgraded for military toughness, and fine-tuned for the specific demands of homeland defense. As we wrap up, it's clear that the MH-139A Grey Wolf is more than just a replacement, it's a game-changer. Faster, safer, and smarter than its predecessor, it brings 21st-century capability to a mission set that hasn't seen real innovation in decades. Whether it's patrolling nuclear sites, rescuing stranded personnel, or deploying rapid response teams, the Grey Wolf is ready to take flight on time, on target, and with the full force of modern technology behind it. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this deep dive into the MH-139A Grey Wolf, be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon for more content on cutting-edge aerospace tech. Got questions or want a breakdown of another platform? Drop it in the comments, we'd love to hear from you. Dash dash dash. Let me know if you want a shorter version, narration tips, or visual cue suggestions for editing this into a full video.